every day at noon. We get together. We talk about what's going on. Talk about what's going on in my life. Talk about what's going on in your life. But you can only do that one way. And that's by calling the show. 866-969-1969. That's 866-969-1969. Instead of testing the phone systems today, we uh, realized they worked after Lady Di called before the intro had even started. So I'm sure we'll get to her at some point. A lot to talk about today. Some new food at Disney World. I want to talk about what's going on with P. Diddy. I want to talk about what's going on with 50 Cent. I want to talk about the goddamn funniest video I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going to show it to you today, Nicole. I'm so excited. Nicole Ryan is here. I was laughing at this video. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it yet. You can, you can guess all show long if you want. Maybe you've seen something. Maybe you think you know what it is. Again, you can call the show at 866-969-1969. How are you, Nicole? I mean, I'm okay. Only Okay. I'm having a little bit of like a stressful day, but that's okay because I'm here now. You didn't look stressful. You walked in with a very New York vibe about you. You had uh, you were in like a sundress today because yeah. it's very warm hot outside. Hot as balls, not I, warm. It's hot as balls. Hot as balls. I try to maintain a little bit of decorum here on Sam yeah. Roberts Show, but right. that's me. That's not you. No. I saw a girl walking around with a parasol today. A parasol? You know what a parasol is? It's Don't. one of those umbrellas that you just use for the sun. I feel like I see Asians doing that a lot. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be like racist. I feel like I do see a lot of Asian people with. That's how I know I'm not racist. That regardless of ethnicity, I'm, whenever I see a parasol, I want to push that person into oncoming oh, traffic. It doesn't like, matter what, what their ethnicity. The only, and this is a pale woman. It was a white woman. I think it was. What? A, I think it was a white woman. But I thought Rachel Dolezal was a black woman. I so mean, I get things wrong. But it was a white woman. And I was sitting there going, like, why wouldn't you just enjoy the sun? The only thing that's good about this weather is I can work on my mean farmer's tan yeah. that I try to develop every year. Do you have a farmer's tan every year because you refuse to, like, like yeah, when you go that. to the beach, it's mm-hmm. not cute. Don't show me. Don't show me like you're proud of it. It's not cute. It's cool. When you go to the beach, do you take off your shirt ever? I don't go to the beach very often, Nicole. I'm not what they call an outdoorsy type. I know, but at some point during the summer, you have to go to the beach. It, it ends up happening maybe once or twice a summer. Yeah, I mean, I try to... I try to I, I've gone to the beach with jeans on. No, no, you didn't. Yeah. Don't do that. I'm not a beach person. I was going to invite you if you want to do beach day in the coming weekends. But... You got it. You got. If you're going to invite me to the beach, I need... Like, at least three weeks heads up, just so I can try to tone a little bit. And you need to order a parasol from Amazon. I'll need to order a parasol. I need to order some tanning sessions. And I need to tone up a little bit. Okay. Because I'm not in... You're fighting shape. Right, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not I'm, I'm not at fighting weight right now. Okay. So I do need a heads up. I can pull it off. I mean, I think that you'd enjoy a beach day with me. Maybe with you. Not with anybody else. No. But maybe with you. Just me. Well, why is today stressful for you? I just, there's just a lot going on. Yeah? Yeah, my spawn kept me up all night. Well, uh, that's because you're st- stupid enough to have a kid. And then just, you know, just some life things. But yeah. it's okay. I'm not, I'm not going to, this is where I'm forgetting them all. Right, why dwell on it? I'm going to let them go. You know why you don't have to dwell on it? Because here on Sam Roberts Show, we focus on other people's problems, and we mock them, and then we feel better about ourselves. That's the whole purpose of the show, mm. is to find people with their own problems, right. and then laugh at how, you know, shitty they they are, and then we feel better. <laughs> do we? Do we well, really? <laughs> temporarily, while I'm in this zone. Right. This is the only time I really feel good throughout the day, really? is the two hours that the show is on, because I feel like I'm creating this world, and I'm just living in it. Maybe it's also because I'm all the way over at Lincoln Center. Right. So I'm in this little studio, I'm just talking to my people, I got my friends in here, mm-hmm. and it's just like two hours where that's it. And then the rest of the day is kind of miserable. I had such a bad morning that I actually had that hot dog that we always discuss. You got a New York hot dog? Yeah, I actually feel like I like I'm gonna vom. I'm so disgusted. Is that myself. short for vomit? It is. Oh, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Welcome to Sam Roberts Show, pal. Good talk. All right, Jason. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a couple minutes to assess yourself right. and uh, figure out what zone you're in. Maybe not everybody's ready to call Sam Roberts show at the top, the top, top of the show. I understand. Right, right. It's a lot of pressure. We haven't even really dived into anything yet. Dived? Dived. Dove. You wouldn't say I, we haven't dove into We haven't really dove into anything. I believe it's dove. You could say dived. I'm pretty sure it's not dived, though. Well, you're not exactly a brainiac. No, so didn't, <laughs> didn't claim that. But So anyway, it's called Sam Roberts show with a possessive <laughs> S on the end of Roberts. So I think we'll go with dived. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have you been following this Taylor Swift thing? Duh. Did you know my tweet about Taylor Swift 
Oh, God. Ended up... What do you mean, oh, God? I wish you could just... I feel like you're about to gloat. Well, I am. It was in the OC Weekly. What is the OC Weekly? It's a, the, the newspaper in Orange County, I guess. I mean, I'm proud of you, but that's not gloat-worthy. It's on the West Coast. Right. I'm a worldwide phenomenon. It's, look at this. It's like Josh Gad's tweet is here. Uh, Piers Morgan's tweet is here. Will McAvoy from... Uh, Who? From the newsroom, the character on HBO. What's his name? Will McAvoy. Oh. Yeah, and Sam Roberts' tweet. Dear at Taylor Swift 13, can you also make it so the speakers go louder on MacBooks? That'd be cool if she could hook you up with that. Or just, everybody. I was just kidding. But um, it's because she had so much power over Apple that then you start, oh, what other problems do I have with Apple? Oh, Taylor Swift can solve them. Oh, we print you in the OC Weekly, Sam Roberts. Congratulations. <laughs> That's what happens. She is quite powerful. It's crazy. I really, and I was talking about this yesterday, because, yeah, well, everybody's, a whole bunch of articles are still, everybody's still talking about this story because Apple is such a notorious company for doing things their way. Right. Apple has never been one to compromise. You know, they were the ones that first came out with these computers that uh, wouldn't run other people's software. Right. All, it, it was always them, and, and Bill Gates would say, hey, why don't you let Microsoft Word work on that? And at first they were like, Fuck you, dude. Yeah. I don't know if they said that, but... I think Steve Jobs would have said that. That yeah. was Steve Jobs' thing. Tim Cook would have been like, let's talk about this. Right. We'll have a meeting, and we'll see where the investors stand. Yeah. Steve Jobs was like, fuck the world. Yeah. You know? They don't really bow down to anybody, except for... T-Swizzle. T-Swizzle. So Taylor Swift writes this whole blog, and we talked about it at the end of yesterday's show, about how she wanted money... For her songs, because Apple, when they do their streaming music service, where you get the first three months for free, I guess was not going to pay the artist for the first three months. But it's important to note that she wasn't saying being greedy, because clearly she's got all the money in the world. It was about the littler people. It was not it about... It was. Then how come it was on TaylorSwift.com? No, but I'm saying I think that she was speaking out for the littler people who don't have a voice like hers. People who are just coming up and might be losing out of money that, that she thinks they're owed you and really, deserved. You would, I got a bridge to sell you, Nicole. <laughs> you naive <laughs> little baby deer, whatever. You doe. It's a fawn. You fawn. You little, little fawn. Why? She, she's, not, she's got all the money in the world. What is she worth? Do we even know? Well, she's not worth $9 billion, no. and we know Donald Trump is. Correct. So she's probably watching Donald Trump's speech, going, that dude's got $9 billion. I gotta catch up. And she's like, I mean, I'm in control of the music industry. Then she sees, she's not getting paid for three months right. of Apple Music, and she's going, fuck that. You don't get $9 billion by giving your fucking teardrops on my guitar away. Right. For free. Right. It's not gonna happen. I really think... And the more, like, a lot of people are just kind of focusing on the fact that, you know, how did Taylor Swift get this powerful? She's powerful, blah, blah, blah. I really think... I mean, she's worth $200 million, Paul just showed me. Well, that's not a best less than, that's not even $1 billion. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's still only two commas. It's not enough. Oh, my God, how funny was that on Silicon Valley? <laughs> I'm so glad you watched. Um, yeah, $200 million is what she's worth. Yeah, it's pretty good. She's still, and I'm going to, so, when she left Spotify. Right. Which she did before this. Mm. Was she doing that for the little guy, too? I mean, that was probably more more of a havesy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that one had a little bit okay. of both. What do you, what do you mean, havesy? Like, like what? it was a little bit for like it was a little bit to say like she was standing up for the music industry. But at all. but listen, bitches, I worked really hard to get here. Pay me. Right, I didn't make the two hundred million by giving shit away. Correct. I honestly get such a vibe when I read this from Taylor Swift and all these artists that are kind of like, yeah, she's right, she's right. It's the exact same vibe I got when Metallica and Dr. Dre and Trent Reznor and all these people were speaking out against Napster and how terrible Napster was. And they thought if they shut down Napster, if they right. could just get their opinions out there mm -hmm. and they shut down Napster, mm -hmm. they thought that then people would just go back to Tower Records and buy CDs. And it's like, ah, yeah, it's not going to happen so much. It's like Taylor Swift is like, no, 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 we have to get paid. And there will always be somebody who's going to give your music away. Your music's always going to get stolen. And it's 2015. It couldn't be easier to steal digital content. I think Taylor Swift... By concentrating so much on making sure they get, you know, the right percentage for their streaming music is not being forward thinking, is not sitting there going, this isn't, we got to let go of this. Realize this is going to happen. Don't sit there and get ass raped by labels and, and, yeah, and all that. But she is getting ass raped. No, she's just not getting her little three month free trial. Like, relax with that and figure out where the industry is going. If she wants to help the little guy, 
then let's figure out how they can make some Taylor Swift money because it's not going to be by selling CDs to country music fans anymore. I mean, she's my friend and I feel like you're talking smack about her. I just think. First of all, she's not your friend. She is. I've been interviewing her since long before anyone gave a crap about her. I have a handwritten letter from her thanking her favorite morning show, The Morning Mashup. Can I tell you something? Yeah. There was literally just a thing on BuzzFeed about how Taylor Swift writes letters to every radio DJ. But this one was from nine years ago. Okay, so she wrote yours, yours first. And she was super starstruck when she met us even though nobody gave a crap about us then because she listened to us and was so excited that she was meeting us. Taylor Swift (laughs) is the biggest politician in the industry. Even then? Yeah, even then. She She knew what she was doing. She was a baby girl. This was teardrops on my guitar, Taylor Swift. She knew what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing and she's always had a very good team around her. Why are you you angry at her for doing this? Because Because she's making everybody focus on the here and now as opposed to where things are going, which is ridiculous. It'd be like me going out there and saying, listen, all you Sam Roberts Show listeners, I don't want my bits on YouTube. And as far as the SoundCloud page goes, you're going to have to pay for that too, which is fucking lunacy. And you can't compare yourself to Taylor Swift. How do you figure? <laughs> you just because can't. she's not... Yes, I can. Here's why I can. <laughs> why? I'm the indie guy. Oh. I'm the one on the bottom of the totem pole. Okay. And I don't want Taylor Swift talking for me. Because she doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. Because she's living on her pile of money. She's standing up for you and you're hating on her. She can't even see me from the mountain she's on the top of. <laughs> okay? She might have binoculars. Yeah, they're gonna have to, she's going to have to have a, a Hubble fucking telescope to see all the way down there to remember what we were doing down here. Listen. Okay. She should be out there giving classes to artists on how they can actually make money going forward because it's not going to be by making music. She shouldn't be filling people's heads with this idea that you make money by creating music because that's not the way it works anymore. It's not. Okay. You got to figure out how to go and make money on live shows, make money through merchandise. You have to have a loyal audience and realize there's a currency to simply having an audience then you can take that audience and say how can we monetize this not okay you can't get in the front door without paying the fee and that's what Taylor Swift is doing she wants people paying the fee to get in as opposed to everybody's welcome but don't forget to buy a couple drinks while you're here you're making it sound like she's like hurting someone like there's people in this world that are doing a lot worse things to the human race than what Taylor Swift is doing here's what I'm making it seem like she is not saving the music industry I don't think she's trying to save it I think she's just speaking out and standing up for what she believes in and clearly she believes in Cash money. Don't you? Don't we all? Yeah, but you just a minute ago said she was standing up for the little guy, and that's not what she's doing. I said she is for both. She is standing up for the no, little guy. No, you said it was half seas for Spotify, not for Apple. You said Spotify was half seas. Don't use my words and throw them in my <laughs> face, okay? Let's go to Kevin. Kevin, you are on uh, Sam Roberts' show. I mean, what's going on with people? You there, Kevin? Phones are fucked. How so? I'm just telling you, your phones are fucked. That's yep. why. He, it, okay. It, maybe it's your screener. Maybe it's your screener. My name's well, Jake. It's, what's your name? James. Jake? Oh, James or Jake? James. That will never be Jake. That's offensive, Nicole. Oh, Sam said it, not me. No, I didn't. That you was said Nicole. Jake. <laughs> First of all, I definitely said Kevin. And that's because I have a phone screener that does not abide by the simple courtesy of calling people by their name that their parents gave them that they want heard on the radio. Instead, he likes to willy nilly make up names for people so he can have that power over yeah, them. Yeah, it is. It's preposterous, Paul, and it's not a right thing to do. Go on, well, Kevin. Uh, sorry, guys. I didn't mean to throw him under the bus. Sorry, sorry, call screener. I'm no, don't. Call. He deserves Paul, it. No. He deserves Screw it. Paul. Kevin, what's going on? Um, so I, I really think you're committing career suicide here, man. I mean, calling out the princess of pop, Taylor Swift. Mm. You barely have a career to begin with. Let's be honest, dude. Somebody's got to do it. Radio, Jeff. Somebody's got to do it. Radio. I'm here to tell the truth. Okay, I'm here to tell my truth. I'm here to call it like I see it. I'm not here to pussyfoot around. Taylor Swift. Now, look. Your truth, like Rachel Dolezal's truth. That's right. That's right. Me and Rachel Dolezal subscribe to the same theories right. of our truths. Right. The truths to us, how we identify ourselves. Right. I am the only wombat on Sirius XM, or at least I will be. Correct. Because that's my truth. But do I sit there and listen to Taylor Swift songs in my car? Yes. 
You well, know, does that happen? With the windows sure. down? Maybe. All the time. I got that James Dean whatever. <laughs> I don't know all the lyrics to that song yet, but I am saying it's not even necessarily calling out Taylor Swift, although it kind of is. But Taylor Swift is wrong here. She's wrong to think that she should be guiding up-and-coming indie musicians to worry about making money on the actual music as opposed to figuring out how this technology is evolving and where to go. You got to be forward thinking, forward thinking. And that's not what Taylor Swift is doing. I don't think she told them to worry. I think she told Apple to pay. She didn't say you guys should worry about this. She's saying, hey, big, big wigs, do the right thing. That's yeah, all. But now everybody's going to, she's nickel and diming over the songs. No. It's the same thing all those people who had Jay-Z and Kanye West are like, well, we're going to have our own streaming service. Yeah, that didn't work out so well, did it? It's like, well, nobody's going to subscribe to it yeah. because you're sitting there and saying, it's just like the other streaming service, but we'll get more money. <laughs> Isn't that great? And what did the people say? Absolutely, it is not great. Yeah. We won't do it. We want no part of it because people don't pay for content like that. They just don't. Sorry, Kevin, Jake, James, whatever it your name might matter. be. We let's, love you. Let's go to Rick. Speak for yourself, Nicole. <laughs> I love him. Let's go to Rick. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, good, good. Hey, man, I just want to say something right quick. Uh, the record companies played themselves, and they played the American people, all right? Mm-hmm. Number one, uh, when I was in high school a thousand years ago, albums were the thing, all right? The new stuff came out with your CDs, all right? Right. Album's a lot bigger, a lot more paper, a lot more ink. You gotta pay for the sleeve, you gotta pay for the actual press. You get a, maybe a poster or some extra art inside, all right? Yeah, I mean, and you're, and you're pressing vinyl. Pressing vinyl is a lot more expensive than just putting a bunch of CDs in a computer and just zip, 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 zip. Yeah, okay, but my, my point is this, man. You get all of that for seven or eight bucks. Right. CDs came out, they were 11 or 12 dollars, a lot less for a lot more. And you could go to Walmart and get a stack of CDs, a, t- a stack of 10 or 20 CDs for like, I don't know, pocket change. Mm-hmm. So let, so let you know the actual process was not that expensive. But they charged the people more. People yes. didn't want to buy it. And then here comes uh, uh, all the internet stuff, the uh, Napster. Napster and all that. Right. So they played themselves out. All right. I don't feel sorry for the record companies. I feel sorry for the artists who aren't getting what they need to get from record sales. But the art, it's one of those things, thank you, Rick, where, the, where they, you, you need to realize the situation you're in. Should artists, you know, in, an, in a realistic world, should an artist be able to write a song and then get paid for everybody who enjoys the song? Yes! Sure, it'd be great. That's not the world what we live in. What do you mean it'd be great? We don't live there. It's done. That is over. The same way people didn't get paid for their songs on the radio, the new radio is just having it on your phone. I have a question. Do you do your radio show for free? No, because i got a company paying me. Right. Right. So she works for a company. Right? Her record label. Yeah, but I need to figure out... I said this yesterday. I'm a forward-thinking individual of person. You are, okay. Rachel. So I'm not sitting there. First of all, Rachel Dolezal is not a forward-thinking person. Okay. She would know eventually they're going to figure me out. All right. Chickens are going to come home to roost. <laughs> I'm not sitting here going, okay, well, you know, Obi and Anthony and Howard Stern and Ron and Fez, they all started their radio shows, and then they just kept doing their radio shows until they got good ratings, and then they made a bunch of money. So that's what I'm going to do. That's ridiculous, because it's not going to happen. Because as I said yesterday, radio is a dying industry, and I'm the last guy here. Wow. Okay? It's you. That is true. The last wombat here. The last, you're right. Thank you, Nicole, for knowing me as I want to be known. Mm -hmm. But... I have to look outside of this to say, okay, how am I going to continue my career? How am I going to make money doing this the way people used to? Am I getting paid to do this? Yeah. Am I getting, you know, real radio money? No. Are you? No. Let's be honest. So. The thing about it is, she, who is she hurting? She's not asking. We're not. We're, we don't have to pay. Apple has to pay her and these artists. So why are you complaining? The money's not coming out of your pocket. Because eventually. Apple, if they have to pay more, is going to charge us more, and then people are going to just start stealing again. Are we really having a fight over Taylor Swift? Yeah, we are. She's such a nice girl. Let's go to Jay. Well, she brings out the worst in some of us. <laughs> you, apparently. By the way, I met her one time. She couldn't have been nicer. She was delightful. Right? Let's go to Jay in Poughkeepsie. What's up, Jay? <laughs> What's up, guys? How are you? Good. I'm kind of confused by all these whiny cunt, uh, 
famous rich people. See, that's how they come across. Like they don't realize right. that like they're sitting there and all the title people and Taylor Swift and Metallica when it was Napster and all these people mm -hmm. are sitting there and they've made millions of dollars. Taylor Swift has made two hundred million dollars off of us people right. who don't even have close to that. And so now when she's like, by the way, I want an extra nickel every time you stream my song, I don't feel sympathy. Right, and here's the part I'm confused about. Okay, so streaming is radio. Radio, you know, all these different services, they're a form of radio. Right. Now back in the good old days of radio, these artists and the record labels used to pay money, payola, to, to have their records played. Now, all of a sudden, all these services have to pay them. I wish, like, every one of these services for, like, a month would refuse to pay anyone who wants money and let them all go away. I tell them to go fuck themselves. You should arrange that, Sam. You're the man that can do this. I am going to do it. I'm going to bring them all together. I'm going to bring them all into a meeting in a large boardroom. <laughs> and I'm going to say, I've brought you all here to tell you one thing. Go fuck yourselves. What are you going to wear to that meeting? I'm going to wear uh, board shorts. Okay. Flip flops. Okay. And a uh, wife beater, but with a long sleeve t-shirt under it. I don't it. think I've ever seen shorts on your body. No, well, I'm a professional broadcaster. And I'm going to sit here and broadcast in shorts. But to the meeting, fair game. Well, the meeting, that's just an extra, fuck you. Oh, okay. I wore my board shorts here. I understand. Thank you for because clarifying I'm that. Because I'm bored of everything you guys are doing. Right. I think if Taylor Swift has the influence that she has, right. she should be writing a blog about how valuable it is to have an audience and just... But she does that, too. When? She gives, Show me the blog, Nicole. She gives back Show me the blog! She shows her fans love more than any other artist. She really does. She has them over to her house. Yeah, as long as they pay. No, they as don't pay. As long as they no, pay. They didn't have to pay to come They're to her like, house. They're like, oh, I want to invite a bunch of you over. <laughs> Who wants dinner? Okay, we're all going half season on the ingredients, though. Be a hundred bucks a head. Yeah, Taylor Swift is like, I want to invite all you out to a very nice dinner now. Before we go, we are going to go Dutch. <laughs> because everybody should be paying equally we here. your credit cards. Exactly. Throw them in the hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ben, what's going on? Hey, is it... Uh possible that you're upset with Taylor Swift because you guys kind of have the same figure before your transition? Well, that, I mean, that's some it's of it. She, she did cash in on my body type. But I'm growing out my titties bigger, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. I feel like hers look a little bit larger recently. Really? Yeah. She probably used some of the fucking Spotify money to get some titties. <laughs> oh my God, no. I don't think she got a I don't know job. for sure. No, I don't, I'm she just, did it. Okay. She you did. know, you're the gossip reporter. Totally. She did not. You would know first. I think she's just a woman now. No, well, yeah. she's not a girl. Well, not she's yet a woman. a woman. right? Eric in Atlanta. Hey, Sam. Great to be on the show, man. I love the show. But I think you're wrong on Taylor Swift here. Tell Here's me. Here's why. Yes. She has the ability to choose whether she wants to be on Spotify or Apple or all that. All these other big artists don't have that luxury. Sony got a big fat check to put all their artists on. They don't care if the artist makes it paid well because they already got paid. Here's but what Taylor Swift label. If Taylor Swift were really somebody who wanted because Nicole said at the beginning of this, this is a good thing. She's not doing it for herself. She's doing it to bring to light the fact that independent artists should be paid if they're yes. gonna be on Apple Music. Yes. If Taylor Swift, and then we brought up the Spotify thing, Taylor Swift took herself off Spotify because she thought the payment system was unfair. If Taylor was Swift... A bad, bad business decision for her. Okay, but that's, and that's what it is. It's an individual business decision. If Taylor Swift cared about independent artists, she would want Spotify to be as successful as humanly possible, and Sirius, and Apple Music, and every place you get music, she would want all of that to be as successful as possible, because for every person that signs off of any of these services, that's less ears than an independent artist is going to be able to get. In the ears is what the valuable currency is here. Just because she's not on Spotify, does it, every ear in the entire world, this whole globe, is hearing Taylor Swift just fine. They're finding a way. To she, find Taylor Swift, but not the independent artists, because they don't have Spotify anymore. No, but she didn't, just because she took herself, like you said, it's an independent decision, just because she took herself off, doesn't mean those other people should. But you don't think that when Taylor Swift leaves Spotify, people leave Spotify? Perhaps, but I think she took And her don't you think she's taking that audience to herself... Away from the people she's quote unquote trying to help. I think it works with Apple. I think maybe she would, her first go at it was with Spotify. And, and let me tell you, it wouldn't have worked with Apple if Steve Jobs were still around. You think he would have been like what to her? What would he have said? He would have said this. Oh, Taylor Swift's not going to be on Apple Music. Well, good. We have a, a bunch of other bands, <laughs> and we have a new album from Taylor Swift. It's called Go Fuck Yourself. That's what I was looking for. Also, 
My cancer's doing much better. Thank you very much. That's what Steve Jobs would say if right. he were here right now. But he's not. But what if he was a Taylor Swift fan? He, maybe he wouldn't have said, go fuck yourself. You <laughs> think he would have just disrupted his whole business plan because he likes her? As like a, he's like, oh, that 16 song is I fun. I mean, I feel like he could, I could see him rocking out to shake it off. <laughs> Chris, the teacher. Sam A, Miss Nicole, looking beautiful as ever. Oh, thank you. Chris, are you, like, do you just not teach anymore? I don't think <laughs> I should call you Chris the teacher. Did you quit? Yeah, you just gave the middle of the afternoon, and you've called so many shows. Uh, so many shows? What are you talking about? No, you've called this show so many times, oh, I mean. Oh, oh. Like, you, you, you've you so frequently called this show <laughs> in the middle of the day. I don't see how any of the youth of America could be being taught anything We're by We're worried, you. actually. Yeah. Well, though, it's not like, you know, I'm not paid by tax money or anything like that, so I wouldn't be worried too much about that. Is right. it a private school? No, no, I am actually paid by tax okay, money. Okay, that, that is exactly how you're paid. <laughs> okay, good. Good to know. Speaking of tax money. Yes. I got a cool G for you, Daddy O. Mm -hmm. Don't pick up, don't talk to Lady Di today, you get a thousand bucks paid out. Whoa. All right. Well, you better call back tomorrow because it's very tempting and Lady Di is still on hold, so we'll see. You left her on hold this whole time? She wants to listen to the show. It's a great, great show. Oh Speaking of music, and Rachel Dolezal, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, I keep promising this, so I want to hit it early in the show. Okay. Did you hear, uh, Rachel Dolezal is, of course, the woman who was all over the news last week who pretended to be black. With the great hair. Amazing hair. Right. Fantastic hair. Okay. You hair a little reminiscent of somebody we know. I'm just saying. Um... She's the woman that pretended to be black and was in the NAACP, and mm -hmm. she got busted, and yeah. then her parents went on the Today Show with Matt Lauer, and right. fucking threw her under the bus. It's awesome. Well, now that she's a public figure, and this is what happens in this internet age that we live in, now that she's a public figure, you know, there's stuff about everybody online. Right. Everybody, and, and half the time it's like, you're a, you're, a, you're a person, you're just a regular civilian. But you you send somebody something on YouTube that you made for them. Right. It gets 14 views, whatever. Your friends see it, and that's it. It just lives on YouTube, and you forget it ever existed. Right. So before Rachel Dolezal was the hottest news story in the country. Yeah. And by hottest, I mean sexiest. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a different opinion. <laughs> that's then. true. Uh, her ex-fiance. Mm-hmm. Wrote her a love song. Oh, no. And had uploaded it onto YouTube. No. How did you find this? Do you want to hear it? I do. Okay, this is a song that was written and performed for Rachel Dolezal by her ex. Wait, what's it called? Fiance. I don't know. I don't remember. Let's listen to it. We're going to, if you want to see, uh, Paul will tell me what it's called in a moment. Okay. And we'll post the video that's on YouTube up at SR Show SXM on Twitter. That's SR Show SXM on Twitter. Of course, that's the official Twitter account of this radio show. And uh, you'll see the Rachel Dolezal video, everything we talk about, and uh, cleavage from Nicole. It's called oh, God. For the Rest of My Life. Wow, it sounds romantic already. Wait till you hear it. It's so good. What do you think so I far? Mean, it's, it's a ridiculous shame. That is my jam. You love it. I need it on on my phone now. It's a ridiculous shame. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 I don't fit. I don't fit. Trust me, I'll get it in. He wants to have her for the rest of his life. I want to have you for the rest, rest of, of my, my life. life. It's so strange that people sometimes don't realize that singing is a talent. Right. Which means not everybody can do it. Right. And that sometimes you just buy flowers, and that's good. Right, that's good enough. Everybody can buy flowers. I mean, E for effort, though. He gave it, he gave it the good old college try. It just... Whatever the music is in the background, it sounds like somebody's being eaten or something. Like, it sounds like technology eating and just doom and horror. Yeah. And then I don't know exactly what the rhyme scheme is. I'm trying to figure out, okay, da 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 Yeah, that's what it is. da 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 But then he's just, like, talking over it. And clearly the whole rest of his life thing didn't work out. No, it didn't. Do you think that when Rachel Dolezal went all over the news, he was sitting there going... Oh, no. Like, people are going to hear this? Yeah. Like, he forgot his YouTube username, well, and he's just like, I fucking forgot this was up. <laughs> how many views does it have now? I don't know. Can you look that up for me, Paul? I gotta know. I mean, did it? maybe it'll blow up. I think it's a hit. I mean, you work on the morning mashup, Nicole. Smash or trash? Let's do a little more. I love your lips. I it's got, it's got 215,000 views okay, but already. But listen, it could be like a Rebecca Black thing, or like, you remember Risque, Smell Yo Dick, that song back in the that day? That was a great song, though. That was a good song. Smell Yo Dick was, and uh, you want to know the truth? I think we played it. On that I think we bleeped out Dick, but we played it.
It was just smell yo? Well, we, we you played it, but I think it was like smell yo like D. We made it so it sounded like D. It might it might be in the system under our in like under our channel. I don't know. All I'm saying is that could be that it could have that, that I don't know. viral thing that it's so bad that people love it. All right, let's see. I mean, 260... This is like a high school thing. Like, you, something embarrassing you did in high school. Like, oh, shit. Do you think his truth was that she was a black woman? Yeah, definitely. You do? Yeah, I think... He's obviously... He's got to be black. Yeah. Which sucks because... No, he doesn't have to be. Well, here's the only thing that's working against that is black people usually have musical talent. Not all. A lot do. I was a crazy generalization. Ray Charles was black. Yes, he was. And, and he, he was, was amazing. Very talented man. That's what I'm talking about. I'll <laughs> Do you hear that creepy thing in the background going? Mm, mm, yeah, like it, that's like the end of the. That's what it, the end of the world sounds like. It's called bad production. Is it that what it is? Yeah, I do. So you, you don't think it's the vocals as much as maybe just some production problems? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think his vocals are actually they could be worked out. <laughs> maybe it's just the people. He's, maybe it's his team. It's the team. It's Rachel Dolezal's ex fiance's team. I don't know. If, I sort of like have this visual of him like given it to her while you know like some people like do it to their own music like I remember Nick Cannon told me that like he used to like fuck Mariah Carey to his own songs yes and so he's just said do you think he sings along yes I want to touch you for the rest of as my life he's, for, as he's going and then do you think that got her off maybe uh, yeah I bet it did wouldn't it get you off it, yeah I'm already <laughs> I'm, I've got a half chub right now <laughs> just thinking about it just oh. thinking about touching Rachel Dolezal for the rest, for the rest of, of my life. life yeah do we know what year that was? That was made. We do. What's the year, Paul? Two years ago, two thousand. Because I was gonna say it's, it's made got, in two years. It's, two, it's got this nineties, early nineties vibe. Like okay, well, does two thousand eleven count as the nineties? No. How about two thousand thirteen? Not even. Two thousand thirteen is when it is where it was reportedly made. Fantabulous. Yeah. Oh. This is. It was posted two years ago, so maybe it was made. It just sounds like a black guy that's never quite gotten over boys to men. Yes, that's what. Yeah, it's got that vibe. Right. Right. That you want to be. You as that's sexy as you want to be? Do you think that he wrote the song or was he just like, you know what? Why don't you let me get in the studio and step back, <laughs> put the pieces together and watch me go? <laughs> oh my God. Chris, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hey, Sam. How you doing, man? Good, pal. Hey, uh, really, two two questions. One, do you think that he did all the music himself? All that horrible cacophony, like, I'll bet, instruments that sound like he got into a car accident? Yeah, I'll bet that he was like, he's one of those, no, 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 I do it all, Rachel. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an artist and producer. I'm fantabulous. I'm, fan, I'm, fan, I'm fantabulous at music. He's got terrible rhyming skills, too. He sound, it sounded like old school digital underground, like Tribe Called Quest, like, some kind of a horrible mashup. No yeah, testicle. yeah. It, it sounds like he was like, no, no, no. I'm very good at singing. I don't write music. Sounds like he's the ladies' man put, to put a song out. <laughs> right. Remember the ladies' man? Cavassier. <laughs> <laughs> he has I mean, another song. Huh? He's, he's got more s- music. Oh. Well, he's a musician. I mean, apparently. <laughs> yeah. That's a differ. How would you? How do you know though? I mean, it's not the sweetest for JJ. There's so many, and how how could you measure that? First of all, this guy yeah. has gotten a lot of the JJ in his time. That's clear from the song for sure. Nobody has this kind of musical talent and doesn't encounter quite a bit of the JJ. Right? Maybe Ray. Have you ever experienced Rachel Dolezal's the JJ? Have you tasted it? Have you sampled? No. Neither have I. Right. Maybe it's as sweet as it comes. We don't. Well, I guess we'll never know. Right. They do say the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice, which would not. I've heard that. Yeah, that wouldn't qualify here. Seeing as, well, I mean, it's her truth. Her truth, though. Right. Maybe it's the darker the berry identifies with the sweeter the right. juice. Right. Because if that's the case, you're on fire. Let's go to Tom. What's going on, Tom? Hey, Sam. What's up, buddy? Uh, that song there is a blatant ripoff of Black Alicious, Make You Feel That Way. The way he's rapping, the whole feel. It's like, and that's like an early 2000s West Coast rap. Rest of your life. Uh, he wants to. He wants to make. He wants to make Rachel Dolezal his wife. I don't understand. That was just, maybe that was just his inspiration. Black Alicia. Well, Gift of Gab is uh, Felicia Rashad's son. So that's pretty awesome too. Uh, huh. Well, but so, but this is not like when you say it's a ripoff. It's I would hope it's a very poorly done ripoff. A really poorly done, but it's got like that same vibe. Like okay. he's trying to be all smooth and stuff. I don't know. He's yeah. not though. He doesn't succeed in that smoothness, it's unfortunately. And then, let's go. To, oh, sorry, buddy. Let's go to Marcus. Guys, yo, he sounds like fucking Tech Nine to a T. Tech Nine? 
seriously, if Tech, Tech Nine, I'm a player. Put it on. It's the same cadence and beat and everything, only Tech Nine's good. This guy's done. <laughs> huh. See, a lot of people are finding similarities, although the one common theory is he sucks <laughs> and the other ones are very good. You should try to get him up here. I don't know. Let's see. Let's let's see. Are you? Are you do you feel this in your loins? I, I mean, there's a little tingle going on. I'm not going right. to lie. I'm going to play a little more then. Okay. With the first all. He knows how to play a fucking harp. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Panties are melting across this country. He knows how to play a harp. It's my favorite instrument. It is? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I've lost you, Nicole, mm-hmm. haven't I? Wow. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of pure pleasure. <sighs> Let's listen to Tech Nine. Okay. That's like a real song. Yeah, I don't think That's, it's like that at all. I don't think it was inspired like that versus this. You know what it sounds like a little? What? There's obviously Snoop Dogg is one of the greatest rappers ever, but right. it has a little bit of a Snoop vibe. I've never ever in my life of listening to music, and I've listened to a lot of music. Okay, I've never heard a song this bad be compared to so many real songs. No, <laughs> I've never heard somebody borrow elements, the singing from so many successful musicians, <laughs> I'm sorry. and just borrow every element poorly possible. He's like, "Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little Black Alicious, right? A little Tech Tech Nine, a little Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I'm going to mix them up together, and I'm going to shit in the bowl." And then we're going to eat that. Right. It's like, why would you shit in it? Yeah. You had all the elements, and then you shit in it. We're trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to find the good. I'm trying to feel his inspiration, feel his vibe. You feel this? See, this is one that He's you... tone deaf. You could actually get on this, Nicole. Totally. Damn, Nicole, you got a good voice on you. Right? Yeah, you got you got a good voice to match them titties. Let's get you in the studio, girl. Let's get you in the booth. <laughs> The booth. Let's get you in the booth. Latest track down. <laughs> I hope Rachel don't get jealous. Because I love Rachel. <laughs> Scott, you're on Sam Roberts Show with Nicole Ryan. <laughs> Scott, we were just listening to VJJ. I hope you're there. Are you there? All right. Let's go to Eddie. What's up, Eddie? Hey, what's up, Sam? How you doing, How you pal? Cool? What's up? Hey, uh, I was just... Uh, I think that band reminds me of a... Uh, Oh, that rap guy reminds me of a certain band called Junior Mint. Okay, look, we're not going to talk about that. I don't know what that is. We don't have any examples of that. So that's that's some professional broadcaster decided to rap in college, and I don't know anything about that. Are you sure you don't? Junior Mint? No, I've never heard of that. Let's what? listen to more of this. Miles behind the road in front would be a clear view. What the fuck is Junior Mint? I don't have any of it here, but it Are is. you Junior Mint? There were three of us. Oh my it's, god. It's on YouTube. It's been played before. Were you rapping? Yes, I was. Oh my god. You're completely off topic, though, Nicole. Okay. I mean, just compose yourself. Okay. It's a love song. Fantabulous. Okay, I can't do this anymore. Fantabulous. <laughs> um, I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you. I want to touch you. I'm so in love with you. For the rest of my life. For your beans. Did you watch the True Detective, by the way? I totally fucking blew it. I've got it. I've got it on DVR. We were supposed to watch it last night, and we did, and I fell asleep. One of the uh, one of the people on True Detective is Warren from Something About Mary. The, really, the brother. I love and him. And so, like, he walked in, and he's like this, like, kind of rugged detective guy. And I just started yelling at the TV, "Fake it beans, <laughs> fake it beans." <laughs> you think that uh, Rachel Dolezal's guy's song has the potential to be this? <laughs> Totally. I don't know. Something's going on. <laughs> I don't think so. You smell your dick. <laughs> Is that what you do? No. With your husband? No. Like, whoa. Mm-hmm. You think I'm stupid? She is smart to do it, though. Come on. We got a lot to talk about today. I want to talk about, speaking of this, what's going on with P. Diddy. Yeah. Smacking people with free weights. Free weights? Kettlebells, Kettlebells. Sam Roberts. Kettlebells. Caitlyn Jenner's uh, Father's Day photo? Yeah. So much to talk about. We're going to talk about it all with Nicole Ryan here on Sam Roberts Show when we come back. But first, what's this girl's name? Risque. The sounds of Risque. We'll be right back with more Sam Roberts Show. I owe somebody money for this. <laughs> Welcome back to Sam Roberts Show. You owe Taylor money. You know, I'm just saying, I worked hard on that song. I was in a studio with a team of 19 people for over 
three hours to get this song made. Why be the dick? <laughs> and you're just coming back to your show with it. I'm creating the energy. She is. That you're coming back to your show with. I feel like I should get a little something for yeah, that. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. You didn't do this. You're not creating this vibe we got going on right now with this song on. Tell Taylor Swift to go into her PayPal account and see that she's got just, she's just fine. She's All got right. enough. I guarantee she doesn't have a PayPal account. She gets paid in PayPal, right? <laughs> Generally speaking. Or what's this thing I just learned about Bitcoin? What's Bitcoin? Bitcoin is it's like the, fake uh, money. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's internet currency, but it's it's kind of invented to be uh, shady. Like so, there's no paper trail on it. Mm. You know, so you, you you buy a bunch of Bitcoin, but you can't necessarily get your money back after the Bitcoin. Is this like drug dealers could use this. Drug dealers can use it. Uh, pedophiles can use it. Uh, all these people, but there are big online retailers that accept Bitcoin. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Why you gonna you gonna invest in some? No, I'm not. It's like investing. It's it's like its own currency. It's like it, almost like investing in gold. It's not real. Except it's not real. It's virtual gold. And the reason I call it gold is because you can buy child pornography with it. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. I'm only joking. You better be just kidding. Tim, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Yeah. What's going on? Hello? Yeah, what's up, buddy? Um. Get a hold of yourself. Hello? He's been on hold for like a fucking hour. All right. What's he, he can't handle well, himself. Why are you mad at him? Why are you mad at him? Because if you're going to be on hold for a radio show for an hour, once it comes time to be on, it's like, okay, be prepared. take advantage of your moment. Okay. And he didn't. The Colonel is on the phone, though. What's that. going on, Colonel? Hey, Sam, got a question for you. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I've been thinking about this for a while. Mm-hmm. Have you ever rubbed one out fantasizing about, uh, about Nicole? I'm sure early in our relationship I did. Yeah? Yeah, I think When we so. first met when I hated your guts? I, yeah, I mean, that, I probably like that better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was like a challenge. Sure, probably early on. And I'm honored. You're a good guy. You're a good guy. He there, is. Sam. Well, He's a smart guy. Let me just put it this way. I have it on high authority that Nicole has flicked the bean, as they say, <laughs> once or twice to primetime Sam Roberts. So Who told you that? Uh, just, I, I know these things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, All that's right. right. Thank you, the colonel. Uh, I saw. I hate that that saying, by the way. Flick. It's so <laughs> nothing worse. Uh, it's not. You don't find it to be sexual and attractive. Zero percent. You're not like you don't think to yourself. Oh, I have the evening to myself. Maybe I should flick, <laughs> flick the bee. It just bit. sounds nasty. Well, that's right. Because I always say to myself, like, oh, the time has come for me to jerk my gherkin a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm busy, Nicole. I'm jerking my gherkin. <laughs> Okay. It's almost, it's like anti-sexual. It's right. Like, yeah. it's like, that's what you say? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm in the mood. I'm in a sexy mood. What, you feel like flicking the bean while I'm jerking my gherkin? <laughs> no, Sam. No. All right. Well, I don't have all the lingo down. I'm so oh. sorry. Oh, you're so good. I saw. Call up. Yeah. If you want to, I, I dare you to guess. 866 866- Nine six nine one nine six nine. You can call up. This video was just brought to my attention today. I think it's it's starting to go viral today. Uh, it made me laugh all morning long. Can I see it? If you have any idea what it is, call up now. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine. Yes, I'm going to let you see it. Gosh, Relax. You like ignored me. I asked the question because I'm talking to the audience. I'm sorry, they're more important than you, Nicole. They are that. I'm with you. Yeah, they are more important. Not by much, though. No. Do you have any, like, did you see anything today that made you laugh no. on that level? I didn't think I was going to laugh. Paul sent it to me. And he goes, okay, here's here's this. And he sends me, Paul sends me, like, a rundown of, of news stories and stuff. And I'm like, why would you send me this? And I'm watching it as he's sitting behind me. Right. And he just had this look of satisfaction on his face because he just heard me crack it up and going, this is fucking great. <laughs> this is great, Paul. This is, this is what I'm talking about. He made his life. Yeah, I need more of this yeah. on the show. All right. Let's nice work, Paul. Listen, uh, listen to this. Is it? Hey, get her, I'll get on. No, I would wait till he's swimming. He's gonna be swimming soon. You have any idea what they're setting up for? No, the audio is terrible. Nice work, Paul. No, that's the audio. I mean, they're on a boat. Okay. Okay, so it's not easy to get the audio. Okay. You have no idea what they. He said he's gonna wait for him to swim. No. All right. Let's go to uh, Perry. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? Good, pal. I'm guessing a guy riding the boots in the lake. Dude, 
The guy what? <laughs> Riding the moose in the lake. Oh. Go to SR Show SXM on Twitter now. Wait, show me the freaking thing. SR Show SXM on Twitter. We have it uh, on the Twitter account. This drunk guy, he's on a boat, he's following a moose. Get up there, let's get on that And he jumps. Watch him go, Nicole. Watch him go. He jumped directly on the moose's neck and look at him with his hand in the air like he's done something. That's Oh, animal this cruelty. guy is my fucking hero. Oh. No, I'm going to wait till he's swimming. He's going to be swimming soon. Yeah. He's approaching the moose. He's on the edge of the boat. And he jumps off right on the fucking moose's neck. Was the moose hurt in this? <laughs> and then he goes off. Listen, listen. He goes off in the sunset. <laughs> they are excited about that. Said, uh, through his laughs, he's going, I've never seen something so awesome. But was the moose hurt? The moose was fine. He's making, having the time of his life running around in the water. With this a, guy, dude, a drunk dude on his neck? I don't his, know if he's having the time of his life. The drunk dude jumps off the boat and lands on the moose's neck. But what if he heard it? What if he broke the moose's neck? We'll never know. Of course we'll know. Because after the guy positioned himself right, he started riding that fucking moose, and the moose started walking around. If you break a moose's neck, he's not going to keep walking. He's going to fall down. He's like, my fucking neck's broken. I wish the moose bit that guy. And if the moose had bit him, I'd be fine with it. I wouldn't say, somebody put that moose down. I'd say they were in the moose's territory, and the moose defended himself. But... The moose didn't defend himself. The moose was like, all right, everybody giddy up. Everybody on board. <laughs> why, why, why was the moose in the water? Why is he running through the water? How Was he running away from them? Well, at yeah, one point, mean, well, uh, yes, he the was, boat he was did afraid. appear to be chasing the moose that was in the water. But the bottom line is the moose was in the water. And I agree with those guys. I've never seen anything so awesome as that guy, chubby drunk guy, with his hand raised in the air in victory, <laughs> as he's just riding that moose into the sunset. Listen to the excitement. The excitement on these guys. These are guys who appreciate life. And the boat's approaching the moose. Get up there. Let's get on that boat. I've never seen something so awesome. Neither have I. Quite I, honestly, I've neither seen, have I. I've seen way more. What's awesome more things. awesome than watching that guy with his hand <laughs> raised in victory <laughs> after jumping on that fucker's neck, riding off into the sunset? He's just in the middle of a lake while all of his friends are on a boat, and he's riding a, <laughs> a, a moose. he's riding a moose in the middle of the lake while all his friends are just proud of him. He couldn't be less scared. I would be so scared of the moose like bucking or chucking me in the water or that's eating called, me or that's whatever. That's called alcohol inhibition. Uh, that would definitely be scary because I would assume that up, being up close to a moose would be very scary, actually. Have you ever seen one? No. Like, I've never been that close to a moose in my life. I've never been close enough to jump off of a boat and <laughs> slam onto that moose's neck. I've never been close enough to jump onto a moose's neck. Did he say neck. yeehaw? No, I well, he's so far away. Yeah, the boat have. kept going, and the moose went in the opposite direction with his new friend on his back. Now, wh at what point did he get off, and where did the moose go? Out of the water? That's where the video ends. That's oh. the greatest part. He goes, I've never seen anything so awesome, and then we never hear from him again. And I've never seen anything so awesome. Look at this guy. He's positioning himself. He's in the right position. They get the boat. Uh, the boat's basically on top of this fucking moose. Poor and guy. then, boom, right on his neck. <laughs> Oh, my God. I feel bad. And then he positions himself. This is just like riding a horse. Nobody feels bad when horses get ridden. They're like, oh, did you see who horses, won the freakness? Horses like to be ridden. So do mooses. Look, this moose is like, yeah, this guy's the fucking man. <laughs> I don't think that's This moose, moose is like, I've never seen anything so awesome. Okay, the moose knocked him off, and he walks away. Oh, Aww. this guy is the ma he's the awesome. Awesome. Way to go, dude. I don't like it. Way to go. And he's got balls. And I you were laughing, by the way. I was. The <laughs> Let's go to Carter in North Dakota. Hey, Sam, I just want to shed a little light, actually, uh, what uh, Nicole said. They actually do swim long distances. Like, if you wow. go up to Alaska yeah. or Maine That's or whatever, what to they'll 
they'll swim across rivers, they'll swim from like one island to another. So these guys were out fishing and they probably saw them swimming across. <laughs> but what I was gonna <laughs> say though is that they uh they're being investigated by the by conservation officers for I think uh, some sort of harassment of wildlife. Why don't they just realize, okay, those guys are cool. They were having a good time. Let's not be their fucking wives and girlfriends and punish them for this. Let's just let them have a good time. That guy was ballsy enough to jump on a moose. A wild moose. On his neck. The part I leave out is though, whatever, if I'm assuming they're probably somewhere very far north, that water is probably freezing ass cold, too. So the guy had to ball up into uh, possibly die of hypothermia. So yeah. kind of adds a little bit more to the bad ass factor. I have to tell you something. Thank you, Carter. If I were on that boat... You got a lot of indigestion today. What's going on? I got the hiccups. Oh, it's the hiccups. That's what it is. It's not indigestion. That's disgusting. Sorry. If I was on that boat... Yes. I would die laughing. I would never stop laughing at the fact that my friend just did that. A lot of people would say, that he shouldn't be doing that. Oh, I feel so bad for that moose. I'd be like, that moose is a survivor. Because he didn't even, his head barely went underwater. Yeah. A big, fat, drunk guy just jumped on the back of his neck. He wasn't and that fat. He was a chubby guy. He was big. But he could use some toning. <laughs> the the big, fat guy, look at, he's not that a, big. He, well, he's a big, fat guy. He jumped on the moose's neck. The moose just keeps going. Again, if you haven't seen this video, follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Okay, it's a little funny. But. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Look at him. And his hand is raised in the air. Nicole, I know the man that you're married to. He would do that. One million percent. And you know why he would do that? Why? Because he'd be like, you know what? This is a bad idea, but Sam will laugh if I do this. Totally. So I'm definitely going to do it. 100%. If you haven't seen this video, go to SR Show SXM on Twitter because you gotta see it. This moose is my hero. Okay. Because he takes the guy for a ride and right. he's a survivor and he's a strong moose. And yeah. I love animals. You know that, Nicole. I, yes, I do know that. But that dude is the fucking man. Yeah. He's not going to some zoo because you know I don't like zoos. He's not going to some zoo and being like, oh, look at the moose. He's all penned in. No. He went out. He found a wild moose. Right. And he was like, I'm going to go jump on that fucker's neck right now. In his natural habitat. Yeah. He's in his habitat. This is his home. He's in his house. That'd be like me breaking in to a... Remember when Mr. Universe was in here? I do. That'd be like me or whatever. Mr. Olympia? Yeah, it's not Mr. Universe. It's a completely different man. Well, they're both big, muscular totally. dudes. And the point would be made regardless. Okay. But... That would be like me breaking into his house, finding him asleep in his bed, and being like, I'm going to butt fuck this guy right now. <laughs> no, it's not. And there's nothing he's. And then he would let me do it for a little while and throw me off. And I'd be like, you know what? Good for you. Honey. For letting me do that for a little bit. It's not analogous. Not no? even a little bit. No? No. Maybe if you were to just hop. Just on, hop on him. Hop on for Did like a snuggle. Away? Oh. I don't know if he had to go. Uh, to okay, fine. Fine. If I just found him and said, I'm going to spoon this guy yes. right now. I'm going to spoon this bitch. And then he tried to shake me off yes. and I was holding on and then eventually he threw me right, out. Right, right. That would be the same That's thing. That's the same. And people would say, Sam, that was a stupid thing to do. And I'd go, yeah. And they'd be like, but you're the man for Yeah, me. and my friends laughed, so who cares? Yeah, they'd be like, holy shit, he's spooning Mr. Olympia right, right. now. Look at how small he is and look how big he is. Right. You don't think... Do you think if you saw that happen in real life? Yeah. Because obviously... You're the type of person that your instincts kick in that you're supposed to think that that's wrong. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing that. You're supposed to think that. But when the instant that it happened, if you saw it happen in real life and you were watching him as your big fat friend landed on the back of a moose's neck. Yeah. You don't think that you would laugh and then decide that you had a problem with Honestly, it? Honestly, looking back now, it was only funny once his hand went up. <laughs> Once he threw it up in victory, that's the funny part. It wasn't really funny until then. I was more worried about the moose before his hand went up, and I realized the moose was going to be okay. So you'd be sitting there going, I can't believe you told him to do that. I can't believe he did it. I wonder if that moose... <laughs> Look at him, he's got his hand in the air. Exactly. That's exactly what would happen. <laughs> it I, was I, funny. I might even be like, yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Because that's when you realize that that guy is a funny guy. Yeah, he is funny. That his instinct is funny to or drunk. raise his hand in air. Well... You know what? Maybe alcohol brings out the best in him. Totally. Because I would hang out with that guy probably only when he's drunk. I wish we knew what his name was. Me too. I would have him on here. I'd get him all liquored up. Yeah. And then I'd have him chase Roland around or something. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Let's go to Lady Trucker. Good afternoon, Sam. Everybody was like, Lady who? I was like, nope, Lady Trucker. Lady Die is still on hold. Uh, it has oh. been 68 minutes. 
Okay. Uh, Sam, if you try to have ass sex with any kind of bodybuilder, yeah. I'm afraid they would squeeze their ass cheeks and break your dick. Uh, yeah, you know what? They might do that. But that would be a risk that I took, and that's why people would think that I was the man for doing it. Mm. Speaking of uh, of all that... Oh, before we move on. Yeah. I found this. I felt so justified. Because, Nicole, you've come on here before, yeah. and you've made fun of me for the way I view uh, animals. Yeah. And, and the animals that I think... You know I like animals, because I hate zoos. Right. I hate circuses. I hate all that stuff. Right. Because I think also, I don't like the people, mm. because I feel like the people are phony, because the people are the type of people yeah. that would say, oh, I love animals. But then they go to a zoo and be like, look at the tiger. And I'm like, yeah, that animal doesn't love that you're looking at him right now. Okay. I don't like the whole vibe. Got it. Is, is annoying to me. Duly noted. I love it when people get killed on safari. I think that's great. Really? Yep. People. Yeah, because what are they doing on safari? All right, we've talked about this. I yes. remember now. Okay, got it. So, I got this list of the deadliest animals. Mm -hmm. And it is the average annual animal-caused fatality in the United States from 2001 to 2013. Okay, what is it? What do you think the most dangerous animal in the United States is? The most dangerous? Mm -hmm. I thought it was a hippo. In the United States. We'd have to worry about all the hippos across these United States. There's no hippos in the United States? What state might have a hippo? I don't know, one close to water, Florida? You're right. All those dangerous Florida hippos <laughs> that everybody knows so <laughs> much I about. Wrong? You always hear about it. I w <laughs> the problem is, yeah, for July 4th, I'm going down to Orlando. All right, don't be a dick. I just hope I don't get encountered okay, by okay. any hippos while I'm there. Um, A bear. There's a lot of fat people uh, you in Florida, be, you but they're not hippos. All right, I'm, I'm changing my answer. You know what's the worst? What? A couple years ago, I took this trip to Cape Cod, mm -hmm. and I brought my wife with me. Okay. She died there. From a hippo? Yes. A Cape Cod hippo <laughs> came right out of the water and stomped her to death. I'm never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> what do you mean? Wait, I it, and it was, it was one of the dreaded American hippos. <laughs> I'm changing my frigging answer oh, to a bear. I don't know why you would, but... Is that a good answer? No, a good, it's not. Wait, right, let me try again. No, here's the thing. Bear kills one person per year. A wolf? One. A wolf. Aren't they dangerous? I guess they'd be associated with dogs. They killed Phoebe. Phoebe my, was your my, other dog. You think, it was, you think it was wolves that killed your puppy or, or coyote. coyotes? I think it was the coyotes. Yeah. Dogs, wolves, coyotes, they're all associated with the same thing. 28 people killed per year. Bears? One person. Really? One person gets killed by bears. You know who the one person is? That fucking asshole who wanted to make the documentary and live with bears. I got it. Yeah. Alligators. Alligators are in America... But they're only in Florida. How could they kill the most people? Florida. Alligators and hippos. Right. You see a lot. <laughs> Alligators kill one person per year. Right, what is the answer? What's the most? Uh, let's see. Other mammals. Mammals. That's, well, let's go to Greg. Greg, what do you think? Greg, what do you think? I think it's the Filipino service people that take care of us serious customers and they treat us like shit when we have problems. Greg, I believe it was either a week or two ago somebody got through with a, with a prank call. I hate those fucking gooks. They can have their lunch at the dump. Greg has called the show twice in the four weeks that we've been on the air, mm -hmm. both times to get anti-Filipino calls through. Don't do that. I've, I don't do it on purpose. He said he was going to say deer. He was going to say deer, Nicole. What? It said deer on the phone screen. He got one over on fucking Brainiac Radio. over here. Way Paul. Paul. I have a Filipino woman in my family, and I love her dearly. I love the Filipino people. Okay. My college roommate freshman year was a Filipino person. Why are you going to say it like this? Like he's like an alien. That's not how I a said it. Filipino person. He's a Filipino person. He just was a Filipino. That's it. Done. I don't just add the person he's part. He's a human being, Nicole. All right. What is the answer? Let's go to Daniel. Oh, Daniel, you're on Sam Roberts' show. What's up, prime time? How you doing, pal? Uh, first, hey, Daniel, uh, you love the Filipinos, don't you? Fuck the Filipinos. Okay, uh, all right. I well, maybe the answer to the question is though, because I'm an insurance adjuster, I would be willing to bet that it is deer. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't think about that. And I've said it a hundred times that deer should be exterminated. Deer is not the number one answer; it's the number two answer. Remember I said dogs, coyotes, all those people kill yeah. 28 people per year? Yeah. Deer kill 52 people a year. Okay. I mean, it says other mammals, but they use a picture of deer. Got it. So it's deer. You know who kills the most people per year? No, I don't answer. 58 people per year die 
from bees, oh, wasps, God. and hornets. Read it and weep, Ryan. Because they're allergic. That's the only reason. Not because a bee well, or a wasp is so bad. Tell that to Thomas J. A.K.A. Macaulay Culkin from My Girl. His name was Thomas J. That was good recall there. Of course it was. Wow. Look. All right. And you're telling me. I'm just saying this. I got so much shit from you. Because my number one and number two draft picks for species that we need to exterminate were bees, wasps, yes. hornets, and, and deer. Deer was my other pick. Oh, the bears was you that you thought that they would. Deer, look, bears, yeah. I thought they were going to take over the human race okay. after we died from Ebola. Okay. Deer, I thought should be exterminated. Bees, I thought should be exterminated. Boom. And then I get an article that they are the number one and number two killers of humans. We are at war <laughs> with bees and deer and deer. And I told you that, and you scoffed. Well, I think I was scoffing because wasn't that the day that you were making fun of President Obama when he was reading to the children and there was a bee there that he should have obviously been very afraid of. Well, I do have a clip that I wanted to play for you of President Obama on Mark Maron's podcast. Okay. Everybody's talking about the fact that he said the N-word on his podcast. Yeah. Yeah, this was, to me, the more controversial moment from uh, President Obama on Mark Maron's podcast. Who can do a wild rumpus? (laughs) (laughs) That's some good rumpusing. (laughs) So, you know... That, I feel like, should be getting more coverage. <laughs> a rumpus is from where the wild things are, if you didn't know. Who can do a wild rumpus? <laughs> That's some good rumpusing. That, I feel like, should have gotten more coverage. That's from the Mark Maron podcast. Right, right, right. right. It's not just the same clip I play anytime any reference to Obama comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Who can do a wild rumpus? <laughs> 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 And then there's some good rumpusing. There's a clip after that where he tells the kids not to be afraid of the bee that they're all running away from, and clearly they should be afraid. He's fucking wrong. Yeah, because they're the number one killers. Thank you, Nicole, for finally realizing that after all this time, primetime Sam Roberts is right again. Let's go to Larry. Sam, I have to differ with you. We have to have the bees and the wasps and the hornets because we have to have the crop pollinated. Look. Without bees, you have no great you have no cherries, you have no apples, because all that tree has to be pollinated. No pears. Yeah, no I, I tried to tell him I've that a while ago. I've addressed this before. It's to Larry. I appreciate the call. It's 2015. Musical artists are not going to get paid for their music anymore, and. We have the technology to pollinate flowers. Did you just say it's 2015? It's like, 2015. You got all New York on Well, there. I'm being serious. Okay. We have the technology mm-hmm. to pollinate flowers. We do not need a species hell-bent on killing the human race. 58 people per year. One of those could have been one of your loved ones. And how would you have felt about that? Um, by the way, side note, did yeah. you get this? Did you see someone just tweeted us that the, the moose rider is under investigation? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it's ridiculous. Re- for what? I'm sorry to go backwards. No, 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 no we're you worried about backwards. the bees, the killer bees. But it's also important to see what's going on with the moose rider. rider. <laughs> That's his name. Apparently. I mean, I care about him. I know you do. Deeply. Yeah. I care about all the animals and the people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I <laughs> care about our president who was on Mark Maron's podcast saying this. Who can do a wild rumpus? <laughs> That's some good rumpusing. <laughs> Not really, though. No. Oh, Bob's. So you really didn't see this being a problem? Which? The bees? Mm-hmm. I did not see the bee thing being a problem. I think I like well, we've had this argument. Could you admit before. to me that you were wrong? Because I've got the I've got the evidence. No, for I'm you not going to admit that you're fully wrong because this they're they're they are the number one killers because of an allergy, not because they're like out to to kill people. They're not trying to kill people. Well, I didn't say. I, look, I'm not worried about their intent. I'm worried about the result, and the result is people are dying. You think all those flies? Honey, honey. You think all those flies want to spread AIDS and hunger in Somalia? No, all those mosquitoes, but they do it. You know how many people are dying in the United States of America every year? Fifty-eight. M- many more than fifty-eight from bees. If it's more, it could be about a hundred, and then if that's the truth, half are from bees. Oh my god! Oh my god! What are we gonna do with you? Hey, Jack. Welcome to Sam Roberts Show. Hey, hey, Sammy, just want to let you know that you're wrong, that uh, the bees are the most deadly uh, animal to people. Oh, I got uh, it's, actually, it's actually humans. 
are the most deadly to people. We kill more people than any other animal. But we're not animals. No, and you know what? People don't kill people. Guns kill people. I don't know. Let's go to Travis in San Diego. You had, had to get that in there. <laughs> it's so hey, stupid. It doesn't even mean anything. Thank you, Travis. What's going on? Hey, I got an important point. The bees are very important because they help weed out a lot of the weak in the society. The, the only thing we need more than bees is like people walking around with like sticks of peanut butter and handing them out at elementary schools. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, we, we just got to get rid of this, uh, this plague of people allergic to, to bees and uh, peanuts. So just if they're allergic, just kill them? Right. So like you're saying that all babies should be force-fed peanut butter at birth. That way, if they are allergic, you we'll find it. out and they'll be dead. End it. And if they're not, that would be the end of peanut allergies. Yeah. Well, you know, just, it's just, not force feed them. Hand, hand them a stick. You know, it's their choice. <laughs> yeah, because oh, if, there's, if there's one thing babies do well, it's make choices. What a violent man. Well, you're the one who wants the bees around, Nicole. So you're on his side. Tim, you're on Sam Roberts' show. You there, Tim? Maybe his name's not Tim. Have we thought about that? There's yeah. a good possibility that Paul misheard his name. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Kevin. Yes. Yes, What's sir, it? Mr. Roberts. What's up, pal? Hey, I can think of like a thousand things that are more terrifying than bees. I'm surprised to know this, number one. But I was curious. Can you just read me off the top five? I'm, I'm just blatantly curious. Okay. So number one is bees, 58 people per year. Uh, number two is other mammals, mainly deer, 52 people per year. Number three, dogs, 28 people. Number four, cows, 20 people. And number Cow? cows. What the fuck do they do? People try to tip Are them and then they me fucking that murder cows them. Kill more people than like shark attacks? Isn't that crazy? Sharks kill one person per year. Alligators kill one person per year. Bears one person. I don't think you have the accurate information. There's no. This was printed cows. off the computer. <laughs> Of the internet, it doesn't lie. Yeah, it's in color, and there's a diagram. Like, <laughs> what are you know. talking about? <laughs> there's no way. I, I saw it on a link true. in my email, <laughs> and it says snakes kill six people, and spiders kill seven, and non-venomous arthropods, which is a picture of ants, kill nine people I per year. Could have just said ants. A ants is the number five. Well, yeah, maybe it's fire ants. Remember this kid? <laughs> That's the sound that? of a young man in Thailand pouring fire ants into his genitals. In Why his did underwear. he do that? He, he chose to do that? Yes, he did. His own free will. Yes, he did. We'll post a video I on SR it. Show SXM. You are sick for me. <laughs> I mean, for two seconds, I felt bad for him. What I got? Such awesome. a great video. He tries to be a tough guy and everything. So was he like... Did he, he does it on purpose. Well, he did it as like a prank. What do fire ants do? Do they bite or sting or just they touch your skin and it's like... I don't know. They bite and then it burns. Like fire. <sighs> fire. What an asshole. He is a complete asshole. Right. He did it like the ice bucket challenge. Like, I'm going to do a fire ant on my balls challenge. Ugh, well, I wonder if he ever... They probably, they probably crawled up into his dick hole. No, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'm saying that like I have a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can feel the pain of it right now. Let's go to Jackie. What's going on? I mean, John. John. What's going on, John? Hey, Sam. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, well, I am I don't have problems with bees and mosquitoes. I live in Texas, so that's an everyday thing. But I've been attacked by a white-tailed deer. And what do you mean you've been attacked by a deer? Because I, my problem with deer is that they run in front of cars and just kill people. Oh, well, yeah, that happens here, too. I mean, guess, like last week I killed a deer with my car, and I mean, I have a front bumper, so that thing turned into a pile of blood. But that's Badass. Me. Did you feel bad? Um, Fuck no. Uh, the deer ran no, in front I, of a car. No, I don't, because I don't eat any processed meat. I, whatever I hunt, I eat myself, and like, I if that, it myself. If that guy that jumped on that moose's neck, if he had drowned... I wouldn't feel even bad for him or his family whatsoever. I'd say that's what happens when you do stupid stuff. Right. And yeah. if a deer runs in front of a car and gets killed, then that's what happens. Right. You should have known. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well... Go ahead, John. Oh, yeah. Well, I was hunting a one-time spot and stalking deer, and this buck was with a doe, and it was during the rut when they're chasing them, and he came across me, and he uh, gave me a good whoop, and... I mean, I, I was pretty beat up, but I mean... How do deers fight? They kick you with their feet. 
Like, do they get up on their hind legs and, and hit you with their front legs? Maybe with their antlers? Are they like those deer with boxing gloves on? Yeah, they're kind of like that. They'll chase <laughs> you. They'll, they'll chase you off. They'll, their front feet lock, and they'll just keep pounding, pounding, mm. pounding, and they'll get up. Yeah. That's... And I've been, been bitten by a rattlesnake, too, and... Jesus, my God. Well, how'd you survive getting bitten by a rattlesnake? Did you Jesus have somebody suck out the venom? No, I was I was leaving my ranch, and I was wearing flip-flops instead of my snake boots, and <laughs> I was closing the gate, and there was about a six-inch rattlesnake right there, baby, and he got me in my pinky toe. God damn. Mm. You were so much more badass than Matt. We found we saw a mouse the other day, mm. and Matt threw me to the ground and supermaned into the bed. <laughs> he was so afraid it was going to touch the foot. <laughs> I love, yeah. I, I love that your 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 levels of footwear. It's either snake boots, right, or flip flops. There's nothing in between. No, that's I mean that's the lifestyle. You here. go zero to one hundred, and we're real quick. Yeah, I live. I live ten miles from the border, so I live right next to the beach and right next to a wildlife refuge. So I get the both the best, both the best, both worlds. You know. Yeah, it's incredible. It's a tongue twister. Thank you, John. You've experienced the world yeah, uh, unlike most of us ever will. Carl, you're on Sam Roberts' show. Hello, Sam. Hello, Carl. So I always thought uh, the hippopotamus was the biggest man killer, but right. not in the United States of America. There's no fucking hippos in America. Oh, I'm sorry. I just tuned in. Well, yet yeah, Nicole heard me specifically say America, and then she still guessed hippos. <laughs> Where are hippos? Oh, apologies. No, it's all good. Like in Africa? Yeah, not in Florida. What about rhinos? Same? Same deal. There is no rhinos in the U.S.? Where would they be? I don't know, where there's water. Rhinos would be where there's water. Isn't that where a rhino lives? Where does a rhino live? Why? Don't get mad at me. Be patient. Don't you think we would see a lot more rhinos? Some like There'd be more references to rhinos if there were rhinos on this continent? It's like something you only see on safari is what you're saying. Right. In like Africa. And poachers kill them for their horns. They're such dicks. <laughs> yeah. We don't even have any here. Yeah, right? And they're killing them. What a bunch of dicks, right? Total dicks. Uh, Roland calling from oh. the office. What's going on, Roland? Hey, what's going on? Oh, you're not Roland. You have issues with Roland. <laughs> yes. What I are have your a issues? Major issue with Roland. Oh, I don't. I don't know. Call Roland. What's the issue with Roland? <laughs> it's a, it's honestly. I don't, this is the forum to talk about it, and it's a huge chunk of the fan base. And you're involved with two sets, so I have to say it on your show. Okay. He is, he is the fattest, most worthless piece of shit. We as fans hate him so fucking much. He is such well, a slob. So nice. he, he books guests, and then there are guests he, on the show. How like, is he hurting you? Everybody enjoyed Putty from Seinfeld yesterday on the show. Well, you're welcome. You know, that's rolling. But, and I'm hearing all these rumors behind the scenes. I'm not going to say who. I got some inside sources yeah. at the station. That everybody's afraid of him? You guys are afraid of that fat yeah, piece so of I'm shit? Afraid of Roland? Guy, I'm going to hang up. He's like a big cuddly teddy bear. Nobody's afraid of Roland, and everybody everybody likes him just fine. Uh, let's go to uh, Snowy. Snowy in Michigan. What's going on, pal? Samuel, how you doing, sir? Good, pal. First off, up, I got bit by one fire ant, and I'll tell you, it thing, after it bit me, I squashed the damn thing. We actually have audio of Snowy. He sent it to us. This was Snowy right after he got bit by one fire ant. <laughs> Very, very painful. Go on. I what, if, I got, if I poured a bunch of my nuts, like, yeah, if I would sound like that. Just get bit by one, stung, I think stung, I mean, sore for like a whole day. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> shit. I wish somebody who spoke Thai would tell us what the, man, the, the boy is actually saying. He's saying, holy shit, they're crawling up my dick hole. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I did a Google Translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some people are getting killed by animals, Sam. It's nature, you know, doing some... Uh, Thing ever heard, especially if someone dies getting killed by tipping a cow, that's natural selection. That's yeah, but a Darwin Award winner there. I didn't say exterminate cows. It's not thinning the herd when deer are running in the street and fucking up our way of life and killing people who are driving. And I'm not going to get taken out by any fucking bee. I hate bees. I hate bees, too. I hate deer. I hit one last year and it took a big divot out of my truck. Stupid piece of shit. Animal. Exactly. Exterminate them. It's all this Disney propaganda that's stopping us from it. At least once, you know, once they do happen to sting you, then they they die right after that, right? Once they sting you, they sting you. Yeah, but I still have to fucking deal with the sting. I wish they would just sting each other. They're like suicide bombers. Yeah. 
They're terrorists. Yeah, totally. They're getting on a bus with a fucking vest on. So fucked up. They are terrorists, these bees. They're kamikaze f- plane flyers. Pilots. Kamikaze pilots. I mean, like, bees. When, when's the last time you had an interaction with a bee, though? Like, when's the last time you actually, like... Oh, I interact with bees. You do? I live in the suburbs, Nicole. On the daily. On the daily. Okay. Uh, Jamie. Sam, you're right on point about these bees. Your numbers are going to increase over the next few years, apparently. See? It's just going to be more and more bees, and everybody's just like, oh, but they give us flowers. Get the flowers. Ironically, I saw a show last night, and it was these Asian giant killer wasps that have spread to Europe, and they've been seen in America. Oh, fuck. One guy in America in the Midwest was barbecuing, got stung by one 15 minutes later, dead. They come over in those boats. You know, like the yeah. container ships. Yeah, and then they're like just sitting at the bottom, and it's a giant wasp, and all they're going to do is kill children. You know what, though? Yeah, if you're well, allergic? Actually, there was another episode in there, another thing, a segment, and the bees attacked a bunch of school children in See? some American city. See? And um, they're growing in numbers, and these things were giant. It's the columbine like the of insects. Really? Yes. If it, you're... It, so anyway, I, I'm with you, Sam. You're on point. You keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, God. Somebody with some sense. If you're allergic, just carry your EpiPen. Okay, well, I hope your daughter's allergic to bees. Well, I hope she's not, because well, that would I suck, hope, because well. then she'll be one of those numbers on that that research... T- <laughs> on my printout! <laughs> that printout that you have brought to us. My scientific printout. I do research. <laughs> George. You sure about that? Yeah. What's up, George? Hey, Sam. Hey, buddy. See? <laughs> I got, uh, I got a couple things for you, but the first one is, uh, you was talking about money, making money and other sources. That's right. I got a great one. I got a great one for you. You need to take all these uh, great sounds that you put out on the radio mm-hmm. and make them into a ringtone. And the first one should be uh, Obama telling that little girl that bees are good, and then that guy screaming. I would, buy, I would pay any amount of money for that ringtone. Uh, hang on, honey. I think I'm, I'm expecting a phone call at any moment. Who can do a wild rumpus? Stop. This is it. It's very important. That's some good rumpus thing. If you'd excuse me for a moment, I have to take this. <laughs> Go on, George. And also, I am with you totally. These bees are horrible. They do nothing good for us. See? We can train. We can train uh, all these illegals to uh, pollinate the flowers and stuff. Yeah, we got there enough go. people. We got. It would be. Here's what would happen. It would be a new industrial revolution if we got rid of the bees. The same way all these people are out of work. What happened after the Great Depression? Or before one of those two, there was the Industrial Revolution. Some point in history. It was definitely before. Okay. But we had an Industrial Revolution, and we had all kinds of factories here. And what happened when you built all these factories? Everybody had jobs. The kids had jobs, for God's sakes. Everybody was working. It was a glorious time to be an American. Especially for the kids. The kids loved it. They were coming home with the black lung (laughs) from working hard. It was like a badge of honor. So, we get rid of all the bees... We got all these flowers. Who's going to pollinate them? All the people. And all the jobs that are being replaced by technology, like toll booth workers and ticket takers and parking lots and all that stuff, those people would become flower pollinators. Oh, I should just run for president already. Why is nobody as forward thinking as me? Maybe you should be. You should contact Trump and be his running mate. I could give him so many fucking ideas. I don't know about that. I could. About bees, specifically. Wouldn't it be great if he came to the table and he was like, first of all, bees, you're fired. (laughs) I would vote for him. (laughs) I know you would. Let's go to uh, Raul. Yeah. All right. What's going on, buddy? Hey, how's it going, fam? Good. Good. I uh, wanted to give you props. You know, if it wasn't for you guys, I never would have known that flies were spreading AIDS and hunger all over. That's right. That's what's happening. <laughs> it's so hilarious. <laughs> Thanks so much. Th- thank you, Raul. I appreciate the call. It's a call of appreciation. He's just saying. He's love. Gl- he's glad to know the facts that I'm yeah. giving out. Uh, Derek. Hey, what's happening, buddy? How you doing, pal? Oh, doing pretty good, man. Yeah, I got a uh, bee sting on the nut sack. What? I was, uh... How'd that oh, feel? Oh, yeah, buddy. Well, that's what happens. You know what you, you know what he did? He went up to the bees, and he was like, hey, bees, you know D's? <laughs> and the bees were like, D's? And he was like, D's nuts! nuts! <laughs> and they were like, okay. Uh, it was it was brutal, man. I was uh, swimming with the old girlfriend, decided to take off the pants. 
Good. And uh, was just kind of floating around on a tube, got one right on the nads, man. They he wasn't even bothering out. anybody. And he got and he fucking got it right on his nads. Not enough people I mean, say nads anymore. No, they, enough people say it. <laughs> you think so? it did, did your balls? Did, did your balls look like elephantitisy after that happened? I would uh, think w- one did. Okay. One did. One ball. All right. All right. Sam, sure yeah, but that, I mean, I'm, I'm, fuck those bees. Exactly. In that moment, you were probably thinking to yourself, "We don't need flowers. We need right. less bees." Right. All right. We can, done? we can go on for hours, and we have before. Yeah, I know. But there's other stuff I want to cover today. As I said, I want to get into that P. Diddy thing. There's an update on the uh, KFC story I was talking about last week. That's Somebody false. found a fried rat. That's not real. That's what I try to tell people, and they still want to blame KFC for everything, because fast food is the dibble. I mean, it is a little bit, but there it's was not. no fried rat. No, there wasn't. We'll get into a whole bunch of stuff when Sam Roberts Show continues here with Nicole Ryan. So much going on. Sam Roberts show today. Don't forget to follow along on Twitter at SR Show SXM. You see all the videos we've been talking about, the moose video, for instance. Maybe we'll put up some animal statistics for you. Also, we're doing something very cool on SoundCloud. If you go to SoundCloud.com slash SR Show SXM, same as the Twitter, SR Show SXM. Uh, every Monday morning. We're putting up a uh, week in review. Okay. It's going to be a one-hour best of everything that happened the week before. And that's free. That's on SoundCloud. You can send it to your friends. It's not. You don't need a subscription to anything. Right. You just go to SoundCloud.com slash SRShowSXM. You can get last week in review. And I'm putting up bits all the time. I put up... Uh, I put up my rant in Taylor Swift from yesterday. Right. Which I guess was similar to the one on today. And it's free. Yeah, I put up uh, when Katie Lennon was in here and that genius was on the phone and Doug Benson was on and we were talking about artificial intelligence. A whole bunch of stuff. If you go to soundcloud.com slash SXM. And while we're taking care of business, Tough Enough is on tonight. Tough Enough? It's WWE's reality show. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm sorry it's not The Voice. I don't watch The Voice. What do you watch? Nothing really right now except for like the housewives because like we're in that place. There's like no TV. Well, now now there is some TV. Right. It's called Tough Enough. I'll check it out. And we have a friend of the show whose name is Daria Baronado. Mm. Daria Baronado. She's one of the contestants on Tough Enough. So uh, watch the show tonight and vote for her so she can be a wrestler and then come on the show. Okay. All right. Let's do it. I'm in. I'm voting. The D, the D, the Y, the D, the I, the D. It's D. So did you hear about P Diddy? I got a kettlebell. <laughs> so. I guess P. Diddy. Have you ever lifted a kettlebell? I mean, you, they're, they're ridiculous. Are they different from just regular bells? Because I've lifted a bell. Yeah. I've lifted a cowbell. <laughs> no, they're very different. Okay. That's as far as I've gone as a cowbell. I almost blew my back out with a, a kettlebell once. How big was it? I mean, I want to say it was like 40 pounds. All right. Yeah. These, I mean, obviously, anybody who knows what a kettlebell, I would hope everybody knows what a kettlebell is. It's just big iron balls with an iron handle on it. My question is, like, what was it doing just sitting around that he was like, hey. It was a gym. They, was, they were in the gym? Yeah. So basically what had happened was Diddy's son plays football, I guess. Right. Yeah, for at this, UCLA. For UCLA. And the coach was yelling at him. Okay. He was riding him. Yeah. Now, I've watched Friday Night Lights. Yeah. So I know sometimes, especially when, you know, two-a-days and everything, you right. got to ride these kids. But you, you listen got to ride them. You listen to Coach Taylor. Of course. Coach Taylor knows what he's doing. Uh, so he was unhappy after his son was removed from a workout. So okay. So Coach Taylor, whoever this coach was. <laughs> we'll just call him Coach we'll Taylor. We'll call him Coach Taylor. Um, <laughs> so the coach removed him from a workout. And Diddy gets fucking pissed. I've read that they call Diddy a helicopter dad. I don't doubt that. In the sense that he's hovering over uh, Justin. Mm. Justin Diddy is his son's name. I don't think that's his name. Justin Puff? I think it's Justin Combs. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay. We'll uh, we'll have to do a little... We'll get the research team on that. But that's the thing with coaches in any sport. You, as a parent, hand over, like, not your parental rights, but, like, the coach is the The coach boss. rights. Like, right. uh, in terms of how the game is played right. and how your uh, child is taught. Or reprimanded. Diddy didn't like Apparently that. Apparently not. And so he... Uh, I, He's being accused of physically assaulting. The coach. He went in. They started an argument. Cops were threatened to be called. The latest update is that the coach grabbed Diddy by the shirt. And Diddy grabbed a kettlebell to defend himself. People are saying that he didn't actually hit him with a kettlebell. He threatened him with a kettlebell. Right. 
I think he got hit with a kettlebell. At least in the gut, where it leaves no marks. Yeah. Diddy knows what he's doing. Yeah. Well, I have audio. You do? Have it, no, has nobody played this yet? I haven't heard this. Yeah, I have audio. It's from a security camera inside the, uh, the, the locker room that this confrontation between Diddy and his son's coach took place at UCLA. Okay, what is it? What's okay, the audio? Listen, How'd you get this? Well. You like to bully kids? Ass. Pen. Hold on, what is this? You 12 years old and you're already evil as fuck. Hey, oh, you can't talk. Wow. <laughs> Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. I thought that got you off, kid. Seeing people in pain. If you ever bully or hurt anybody again, I'll come back and butt fuck your father with your mom's headless corpse on this goddamn lawn. What's that really from? So, uh, from the Diddy thing, I no, think. No, I don't know if I was no, what mis- is that really misinformed. From? I got excited for a second. You had that. I had the exclusive. I did. That's the exclusive here. And I guess, technically, it's breaking news. That's right. That's audio from the confrontation that P. Diddy had with his son's coach. And that there was also was- another 12 year old there for some reason. I don't know why. And he said he was going to butt fuck his father. He said he was going to butt fuck his father with his mom's. Uh, Severed head corpse. Okay, but for real, what was that audio from? Uh, True Detective. No, it's not. You didn't see the new season? I. But you just asked me this before. That I was said a not commercial. yet. Or maybe it was on the air. I don't know. But okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, that was that was that was the season premiere of uh, speaking of Friday Night Lights. That wasn't Riggins, but he's on the show. <sighs> that was the season premiere. I like True Detective. People are kind of shitting on it. Um, it was kind of weird. There were some romantic moments I felt like between. Uh, Colin Farrell and Vince Vaughn. Really? It was kind of strange. Are you calling them romantic or were they really romantic? They felt romantic to me. Some people, I guess, were like, no, they're criminal and violent, but they felt romantic. Like, I feel like those two characters are going to kiss before but, the end of the but show. But Riggins is in the first... Uh, his, name, his name's not Riggins. It's Taylor Kitsch. He's in the first episode. Oh, he's all over it. I want to lick him everywhere. You do? Oh, he is my. He is probably my number one. Yeah? yeah, and there's a lot on your list. Yeah. So for to be number one, next it's huge. to you, he's my number one. I appreciate you saying that. I thought that would go unsaid, but people would pick S- up on it. You assume it. I'm glad that you put it on the yeah. record, uh, Zach. Yeah, I said that uh, when P Diddy spoke the coach, did you say kick that, kick that, kick that? That's right. That's exactly what he said. Is he was smashing him in the face with a kettlebell? Um, I would think, and I guess this is naive of me, because. Any success that's come to me has brought no happiness with it whatsoever. I would have thought, from a non-billionaire's perspective, that once you get to be a P. Diddy billionaire, you would have enough satisfaction in your life that you don't need to fucking beat up coaches. No, but it's not about like any... It's like... It's a a control thing. It's just power. It's just power. Once you get all the money in the world, you get so power hungry that you have to take control of this thing so you see this coach who has every right to throw your son off the field and you're like no 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 p diddy is the alpha dog here like you i'm taking have control you heard the rumor i'm sure i'm not the only person who's heard this there's rumors that he is so power and control hungry that he's even like gotten, he changes his name every three weeks i have heard that, that rumor. too yeah. but like he's had guys go down on him and he's g- given it to guys because it's all that power it's not that he's a gay man like it's prison him. sex yeah he's like you know what i'm just so powerful like suck my dick that's rape <laughs> no but like, like that's a passion of power not a passion but like of- a gay man that might want to Right. You know what I mean? He's just like, yeah, I don't, I'm not attracted to you, but like, yeah, do it just because. Right. You know? No, they, he's gay if he's doing that. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a person who's uncomfortable with their sexuality. If that were right. what he was doing, and like you said, it's just a rumor that somebody told right. you it passes around. If that were the case, then he would be a homosexual man. Okay, well, I mean. Who's trying to like deal with that right That's now. what I feel, but I also think it's about power too like they said like Hugh Hefner has also it's like you have get so much money and so much power what else you, guys blow him what else can you do what else can you conquer and that's like a thing that you haven't done or conquered I can only hope that I get powerful enough that I want guys to blow me because <laughs> right now I feel like power less okay I feel like the bottom of the totem pole right now yeah yeah I'm sorry about that maybe one day it'll happen though I feel like it might yeah so you really have heard that do you yeah. so if you found out that you if you were dating a guy yeah and he was like, no, I've had dudes blow me before, but it's just a power thing. Like, I put a gun to their heads, like Phil Spector or something. Yeah. Would you be like, oh, you're 
you have homosexual tendencies that you have to work out before I can date you? Or would you be like, oh, you're so powerful? <laughs> I would never. First of all, that's not what I sound like. You do the worst impersonation of me it ever. It does kind of sound. Oh, you're so powerful. See, that's it sounds very similar. I sound oh. like. Um, I don't. I don't. Uh, if someone, if they said that they had had like they had had some sort of sexual interaction with a guy, not that they held a gun to his head or... or well, it's about power. Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't... I would hope that I wouldn't end the relationship because they had that, that part in their past, but I would I would be worried that they were... I would say, maybe you don't end the... Well, you probably should end the relationship, but under the context of you need to do some soul searching because yeah. there are parts of you that you're not identifying. Right. And we're living in a post dolazal world. Yeah, and you have to live your truth. We, yes. We can be trans-ethnic. We can be uh, uh, trans-anything, transsexual, trans-what-have-you. We can even be trans-species. Mm -hmm. And that's something that the mission that this show has yeah. in terms of both the human race right. and the wombat community Yeah, kind of coming together on that. I don't think Diddy's the only one that I've heard that. I feel like there's a lot of people in Hollywood that, that it's been like that. It's a, And we'll never understand it because I don't see us ever having that kind of money and power. Why would you s fucking say that yeah. about me? <laughs> Not you. I said us. Who's us? You and I. That's me. <laughs> Half of that is me. I understand. Why would you say that? Why would you have that little faith in me? You think you're going to have, like, d daddy money one day? I'm the fucking dude. <laughs> you are the dude. You I'm the, the last professional broadcaster, Nicole. Okay. Like, that's what we're working on here. Okay. You think I'm hanging out at fucking Columbus Circle in a closet studio because this is as good as it gets? I didn't say you weren't going to have success. I just said we weren't going to be, like, a full-on media mogul. Well, not with that attitude. Okay, I'm sorry. And when I said you should come aboard this train, that's where the train was headed. Okay. To Dick Suckville. So you're ready <laughs> yes. to look at it to have that much money and power that you're going to be like, Paul, suck my dick one day? That's why Paul's here. He already <laughs> looks up to me. He knows that that might be in the future. That's something that could happen. He's already halfway there. Okay. And I'm going to get home and Jesse's going to be like, let me smell your dick. <laughs> it smells like Paul again. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And I'll say, Jess, this is just what successful people do. Right. I mean, I have conquered everything. I, I mean. I'll go like this. Jess, it's work. <laughs> it's work. work. You need to deal with that. You like that food on your plate? Yeah. You like that bracelet? Yeah. You like that dress? Mm-hmm. Well, that's because Paul's sucking my dick. Paul's slapping on my knob, and yeah. that's just because I can't. Because cause I can. Because I can. All right. Well, God damn. I feel like we've got... Oh, real quick, before we run out of time. Oh, I'm, oh my God. Last thing I wanted to touch on. Caitlyn Jenner had her first Father's Day. I know. Post the photo if you can, Paul, real quick, on SR Show SXM on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner had Kanye West and the Kardashians mm -hmm. and a couple of the Jenners, mm -hmm. and they all got together for Father's Day. Um, I saw the photo. Immediately, I thought to myself, look, you can be a warrior. You can be courageous. Mm -hmm. You can be a pillar to the community. Totally. You can be a great human being, yep. a hero. Yeah. You don't get a Father's Day. I don't I don't think that's the, the of course the, he said it was like one of the things that Bruce said before he transitioned was I will always be your dad you can always call me dad I'm always going to be your dad just because I choose to live as a woman now does it mean that I'm not your father I'm still your father no he is their second mom no that's not the way that it works he is a trans woman I you know my main my main issue with that picture was what that they were they were they took that picture when they were off-roading is that what you call it yeah, like ATV doing, or they whatever. They were ATVing. Yeah. No guy or girl would ever wear a long dress down to their ankles to go ATVing. Well, that's because Caitlyn Jenner has had no time to wear dresses, and now she's just like everywhere she goes, it's glam time, baby. I mean, you can look hot in like sexy like jeans and like a beater, no, Caitlyn. She's not ready for that. Plus, we don't know where the titties are at. Right. Like, that's and true. if you're gonna wear a beater. You better make sure the titties are nice. They'd be popping. Right. Can you pull off a beater? I mean, it's my favorite outfit. Jeans and a beater is like what, what I wear. About. Next time you come to the show, you should wear a beater. I'm going to wear a beater. No bra. I can't not wear a bra. Well, let's see what happens. No, you don't want to see what will happen. It'll scare you. We'll put it on SR Show SXM on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, you can find Nicole. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? I forgot. What? Paul's bit. Paul's got a bit? Paul, grab Paul, that mic. I'm so because proud of you. Because we do a lot on this show. Okay. And a lot of times I forget what we've done. And I like to, I, I feel bad about myself as I leave. Okay. Because I'm like, nothing got done. Right. And then Paul's like, no, Sam, a lot got done. So with that, Paul is going to present the list. 
Ratings doesn't always equal money. Rachel Dozel's ex has a bad production team. Lady Di was on hold for almost two hours, but she hung up. Nick Cannon bangs to his own music. Uh, we are fir- we were the first to have the P Diddy audio. Nicole has a <laughs> lot of licking on her list. Uh, get rid of the bees so people will be the pollinators. Uh, Sam's a fucking dude and on the train to Dick Suckville. <laughs> and jumping on a moose is the most awesome thing I've ever seen. Yes! Mr. Electricity. Yes! That's Paul the producer. Nice. Just coming on here and knocking a home runs every time he touches a mic. On the train to Dick Suckville. <laughs> yeah, well, he's an observant guy. Paul may not be able to pronounce a name. Right. And he may not have the most exciting presence about him. Not really. But he observes mm-hmm. and he listens. Nicole, I thank you for being here. You can follow Nicole on Twitter, at Mashup Nicole. She's on Instagram as well. Uh, and listen to the morning mashup in the mornings if you want. That's where Nicole can be found every single morning on Sirius XM Hits 1. I will be back here tomorrow. And the reason we played that Bob Kelly song earlier today yeah. is because tomorrow... No. Bob Kelly... Is on a Sam Roberts show. Why can't you invite us together? I love Bobby Kelly. You're very busy. Yeah, I am. You're very, very busy. True story. Bob Kelly will be here tomorrow. So will I. So will you. I'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody.